So let's jump directly to birds. Um, fortunately, I made the slides. I, I thought I will cover on Tuesday. But let's talk about birds and then go back to the transformer implementation uh, next week. So bird, like uh, why it's called bird? Because you have air more, like there's another one, like it, it, uh, it's just a series. But they just pick up the name for this one, <laughs> I call the bird. So it, the name doesn't matter, right? <laughs> so think about the idea, what we have doing for trans uh, transfer learning in NLP. Uh, we, in the last week we showed that, okay, using pre trained models to get the word and sequence feature presentation. The last week we showed that using pre-trained word to vec to present a word and fit into your LSTN to try and uh, sentiment analysis. And also Alex covered the language model. You can also like pre-train a large language model to present the words. So we often don't update the pre-trained models. Like you don't want to update the word to vec pre-trained models because like uh, Usually people don't do that, just don't do that. You, you just use these models as a feature structures to get the word embeddings. So then the problem here is that we often need to construct a new model and try and the parameter from scratch. Okay? And because the reason is because the word to vec ignore all the sequential information. We just account the coherence of the words in the center and in the context windows. So the embedding of the words only kind of capture the word similarities, not the sentence level things. So still need to construct LSTMs or the recurrent neural network to capture all the time information there. But this makes the problem that, well, it's kind of, it's good to have word to vec uh, embeddings, but still need to train all these RR models, which allows us to using a lot, need to use a large data set for training. But remember, in the image, we are doing different things. Uh, consider about the, what we did for images. Given an image, we want to fit into a CRN layers, and then construct the coding classifier at the end as dense layer, but the number of class will be the, this problem's number of class, and get the output that we want. The blue one usually is the convolution layers, and this is pre-trained on ImageNet. So by this way, we are think the assumption is that, well, these pre-trained models already map the raw pixels also into semantic uh, space. Only a linear model at the end is good enough for this ones. So we only train the last dense layer from scratch from randomized initializations. All these convolution, convolution layers are already good enough to capture the spatial information. We still need to train a bit by using a very small learning rate. So which, mean, which make, because we kind of just train the last linear classifiers, which make the number of examples for this fine tuning class, fine tuning task is pretty small. We want to do the th same thing in NLP. That is, given the kinds of text, I hope I have a good pre-trained models from layer one to layer t minus one, already capture all this textual info, uh, text uh, structures information there, and we I only need to train the last output layer from scratch from randomized initializations. I don't need to train that the previous uh, Bloom block, uh, blocks uh, from scratch so that I can significantly reduce the examples that we are, I, I need to have for the fine tuning task. So that is the motivation for BERT and also much of other models. BERT is not the only, only one, but this kind of the motivation we want to make the fine tuning for NLP similar to fine tuning for CV. Also, it makes why BERT is important for NLPs. Once you have such good features uh, presentation, which make all these NLP tasks much easier. Okay, let's I look at what is BERT. BERT is actually just a transformer. Like, it's only a part of a transformer. It's an encoder. You even didn't have a decoder. So BERT is just the in transformer encoder without the decoder, but it's much bigger. So you have two variants. The one is called the bird base from the paper. You have the number of transformer block is 12, like it's a very, very deep one. And uh, the hidden layer size is pretty large, it's like uh, 768. The number of heads is 12. So you have 
number prime is 100 megabyte. The bird large, you double the, the number of blocks and also increase the hinder size to 1,000, and number head also increases. So which make you have, even the primary size, you have 340 megabyte. So that's almost close to like uh, AlexNet. It's even for the REST net 152, you only have 152 megabyte uh, parameters. No, no, sorry, it's not 100 meg, uh, 52 megabytes. Megabyte, this is millions, number of elements, you need times like uh, A to get float. Okay, so now we have a very large transformer model. I train on large scale corpus, like on the uh, books called like a connection of books, uh, all these Wikipedia things, it contains three billions of words. So I train a large model, train on a very large scale data set, and then I can, this is kind of the image net, it's not the image net, but it's a large scale NLP data set, I can use it to like as a feature structure to the following task. So this is a basic idea. Okay, then there are a lot of uh, some modification for BERT, like uh, comparing to the normal encoder, because you don't train for a single task, you want to be general enough so that I can use it for multiple tasks. So one idea is that I don't input a single sentence, I input a uh, sentence pair. So think, uh, think about the, the bottom line, the BOS is beginning of the sentence. So this move is great. A sep it's a separator. Like, uh, now we have the second sentence, so I like it. And then another separator here. So there's a pair of sentences. Then this is a pair of sentences first put into a token embedding. That's just the embedding layer we have. The second one is interesting. It's called segment embedding. So it will be the same thing. It, basically, we present the first sentence as A, the as a token A, the second sentence is a token B, which means the first sentence we have the same embedding. To pretend this is the first sentence, the second sentence we have another embedding, which are identical to, identical to all the tokens in the sentence, but are different to the first one. Okay, so this additional one to distinguish these um, two sentences. The last one is the normal positional embedding we talked about before. Okay, so this is the first kind of change um, the input format. That because we don't have decoder, before we had decoder, we have one sentence, another sentence, but we don't have decoder, we put all the things into the encoder. So that's the thing. Okay, so then it defined how to pre-train a task. This is the task used to get the both pre-trained parameters. The first task is called mask the language model. You mean the language model each time you use the previous time to predict the words in the next time. So you can, if you're typing, I cannot predict the next thing you have. The, the problem is that language model is a unit direction. You can only look forward. Like we mentioned in the, transform, uh, in the, in the, in the machine translation, it's good to you can look in the both sides. By the way, the homework 10 will be very easy just to change the machine sequence to sequence model for the encoder to be have a bidirectional LSTN, like a single line of change of code. It, uh, so you have more time for the projects. Anyway, that. Uh, so, so people think, okay, like both the people think, the language model only single direction is not good enough to catch bidirectional things. So what they do is like, I use a mask language model. What they do here, given a sentence, I randomly pick up some tokens, like 15%, and replace this token with a mask. Then the job is to predict this mask tokens. So that's my job. So which means I allow you to look into both directions. So, and, and because we are using transformer, you mean the transformer is always like the attention is bidirectional. For each query, I will look all, all the queries we have, all the tokens in the sentence. So it's bidirectional. The other thing that I did is like, during the, because I want to replace the mask token with a special one called mask, the problem here is that well, for the fine tuning task, you don't have mask symbol. So then, what they do is like 80% of the time, I replace the mask tokens with the actual symbol, but 10% of the time, just with random pickup to tokens. And another 10% time, just keep the original words. So avoid that, 
this language model just to learn how to predict math tokens because fine tuning you don't have such token. That kind of another Nibia engineer trick. Okay, so this is kind of given a sentence, trying to understand the structure in within a sentence. But now the second one is to pr to understand the sequence like a, the sentence rela relationship. So fifty. Uh, percent of time, we just choose a pair of uh, sequence which is sequential in the original text. So this move is great, I like it. This is just a, in the same paragraph. It's a sequential information. And another, in another half of time, which is random pairs. So that's the first, the first case we call it positive, the second one we call it negative. So then we just uh, do, like, uh, do a binary classification here for the second task, the second loss. So in this way, we let the transformer to understand the sequence structures, the sequence relationships. Okay. So that's all. Like uh, that, that's actually all about the birth of fine tuning. Uh, it's a transformer decoder encoder, and with two different tasks, trying to get the word structure in the sentence and the sentence uh, also relationships. So once you have trained the model, now I can use this model to fine tune the different tasks. So for NLP, there's a lot of different tasks. The general idea is, first is an encoder. I give uh, tokens here. For each token, I will give vectors for each token. Depends on different tasks, I will pick up different tokens to use. Let's give a bunch of examples here. The first one is called like a sentence classification. And you can either, uh, the sentiment analysis kind of sentence classification. So given a sentence here, put a sentence into BERT, I will only pick up the output of the beginning of the sentence output to present this sentence. The, why, the reason we can pick up the first one because the BERT is bidirectional. So all the passive information is already passed to the first one. So we will use this vector as the presentation of the single sentence and adding a dense layer, which is randomized initialized to get the classifier results we have. So very similar to what we did for image fine tuning. If we get a pair of sentences that seem as well, we also pick up the first one. Okay, so that is sentence classification. Also you can kind of do like a, a named identity recognition kind of for each word I want to identify if a token is, is a person name, is organization or something special. So what we can do here, we just pick up we just pick the vectors for each token and adding a dense layer to do the classification as well. Like this for each token, we will get the one thing. Before it's each sentence give a single classification results. Now here's each item, we will get the results. Okay. The another one is question answering. That, uh, that's a pretty, like another popular NLP task. The idea is like, given a question, Given a description text, so I, I read the paragraph to you and ask a question. You, you, you will find the answer from the text for me. The answer will be a segment in the a description text. You need to find the location, just to find the beginning of the segment and end of the segment. So then what do you do here? You put the question as the first sentence and the description as the second sentence into BERT. For each token in the description, we got our calling vectors. Then got all this one we want to VT, we want to find which one's the starting, which one's the end. So what do we do here? We just learn, we should learn a, a vector called S and do a, just, a, just, a, just a dense layer, like a single output dense layer. And do a inter, inner products using the softmax to get a P1 and a PT. Then PI is the probability of the ice token will be the segment start. So this is a single dense layer, but compute all the output for the whole sequence, adding using softmax to, to select the largest one. Similar thing for the ending token. We can train another vector to identify the end, end token. So then we got the pair of it. Okay, so that's kind of how to use in BERT. Like we, we probably, we are not go BERT, like you check Google NLP for all this code, how to use BERT. Um, but um, we, the, we didn't cover machine translation. Originally BERT doesn't cover machine translation. Like uh, this is encode decode structure, but there's a lot of following up papers for that. 
Okay, so 